simply trying to control you. He says, we're not handling the Word of God deceitfully. By the way, beware of an individual that tries to control you with the Scripture. Yeah. Well, there's great freedom in Christ, my friend. Great freedom in Christ. There's freedom to think in Jesus Christ. Now, I know some people uh, will take something like that and they'll come up with something bizarre and nutty. And what it really is is that they are what is described in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and they're not spiritual. They're not spiritually minded and they, they can't discern spiritual truth as a result of it. And they'll come up with some strange doctrine. But I want to say to you, uh, the Bible says, knowing this first in, in 2 Peter 1, 21, 22, that no prophecy of Scripture is in any private interpretation. And what that means is, the Bible doesn't say something to you and something different to pastor. And because pastor's been to seminary and has had three or four years of Greek uh, and, and knows some Hebrew, he can have a better hold on truth than you. The Bible says no private interpretation. In other words, it says with the help of God's Spirit, you can know the Word of God just as well as anybody. And the Apostle Paul says, we have not come to you trying to manipulate Scripture or try to come up with some interpretation that causes you to be what we want you to be. He says, what we're doing is preaching to you the ministry of mercy, the, the, or preaching to you the gospel uh, that saves and changes lives. Look at, look at the gospel very quickly. He says this, he, he said in chapter 3 and verse 1, he says, we don't need letters of commendation to you or letters of commendation, commendation from you. In the second part of verse 2, he finishes that thought. He says, by manifestation of the truths, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. By the way, if you want to get into apologetics and arguments to convince people uh, that God is the true God and that He's the creator of the world and that evolution's not true and this religion's not true and that religion's not true. Yeah, there's no end to that. There's no end to that. But I want to tell you something. Truth enlightens. And there is an undeniable, uh, something undeniable about Jesus Christ and the fact that the Holy Spirit comes and lives and dwells in somebody that just sheds aside arguments. I don't argue with people anymore. I've listened to the arguments. I've had classes in arguments. I've, uh, I've, I've been through the arguments and I'm impressed by them because they don't change or help anything. They really don't. You know what changes and helps things? The truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hey, listen, listen to me, friend. Uh, the world can have all kinds of answers and trying to say why there's no God, but they can't figure out how to have a good family. Uh, they can't figure out how to have peace. can't figure out how to have joy. They can't figure out how to have victory, spiritually speaking. And in Jesus Christ, there's all those things, and that's good enough evidence. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. He's saying the fact that this is real and it works, is, it commends it to you enough. He says, your own conscience... You know what I've, I say to people a lot of time? There is a God and you know it. Of course, I don't believe there's a God. Well, Romans chapter 1 says they do. It says, as they did not like to retain God in their conscience, <coughs> hey, God gave them over to it. Uh, 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 that's the end of the verse. That's, the, that's another verse. I mixed two verses together. Uh, <laughs> but the reason they changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator. In other words, in their mind, they came to a place where they actually believed that there's no God, but it didn't happen in their conscience, and it didn't happen naturally. They were born knowing there's a God. So I just ask them, hey, when did you stop believing in God? When did you stop believing in God? The truth is, is that you're lying when you say you don't believe in God. You do. You're born that way, and I know it, and the Bible says so. That's more effective than any argument in the world, friend. I'm just telling you the truth because it speaks to the conscience. You know the Gospel of Jesus Christ speaks to the conscience. When you share the Gospel, don't use arguments. Don't use theory and talk about what uh, could be true and what couldn't be true and why this is more true than that. Tell people, hey, if, if God saves you, His Holy Spirit will come live and you know, change your life and uh, it'll be real. There's nothing more real than God-given grace and faith. Ephesians chapter 2, and verse 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And it's the difference between religion and knowing God. It really is. Uh, how many... Uh, religions, can you talk to where they where they literally have God's Spirit dwelling in them, living in them, and speaking to their hearts? How many can have God-given faith and the ability to believe? Even the ability to believe, according to Ephesians chapter uh, two, is a gift of God. That you, you want to be saved, God. I want to be saved. Well, if you want to, God gives you faith, and all of a sudden you know God's real. You know Christ is the only the way, the truth, and life, and there's no uh, way to the Father but by Him. Friend, I'm telling you, it's just real. And the Apostle Paul says, hey folks, the fact that our ministry is real is our letter of commendation to you. It's in your conscience. And if I have to write you an argument, he says, no argument will convince you. But what's in your conscience and with the help of the Holy Spirit, that will convince you. Friend, let me ask you a question. What's your level of reasoning? What level does it do you have to be appealed to in order to be spoken to by God? Can God just deal with you? 
Can't just speak to you. You have to. Does he have to prove it to you? Does everything have to be proven to you? What kind of a heart's attitude or spirit do you have? Well, the apostle Paul said. Then he said, if people don't hear the truth, he said, here's why. He says in verse three, he says, but if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. He said, if the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't make sense, it's because they're lost, and look why they're lost. Look why they're lost. Look at verse 4. In whom the G-O-D, small G-O-D, the God of this world, who's that? Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. By the way, God didn't pick people to go to heaven, pick people to go to hell. God didn't choose people and say, well, these people are going to receive light, as we're going to see later on in this passage of Scripture. And these people, he said, he can't receive light. Friend, if somebody walks in darkness, it's because of the G-O-D, small G-O-D of this world, Satan. It's not because of God. And it's not because the person can't see light. But I want to tell you something. If you don't want to believe in Jesus Christ, Satan will help you with it. He really will. Hey, if you don't want to serve God, Satan will help you. He'll help you. He's the God of this world, and He'll offer you the things of this world. And if you want to be blind, you can be just as blind as you please, and you'll have help. You'll have help. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Now let me ask you a question. What came first, the believing not or the blindness? The qualification for being blinded by the God of this world was believing not. By the way, that is doctrinal, scriptural repentance. You know, repentance, it's about sin. I understand that. You know what repentance is? It's a change of mind about Christ. It's saying, God, I'll trust you to save me through you, the person of your Son, Jesus Christ. God, I'll receive Jesus Christ, or God, I reject Christ for whatever. And if you want to believe not, my friend, the God of this world will help you not believe, and you'll be able to do it logically with man's wisdom. But your conscience won't commend itself to you. And you won't have the witness of the Spirit of God that your untruth is true. You'll just be enabled or empowered instead of empowered to live for God, empowered to serve God, empowered to be a minister of the gospel for Jesus Christ. You'll be empowered by the God of this world to be blind and be deceived. Friend, I want to say something to you. It ought to help you to understand yourself and it ought to help you to understand the lost, the condition of the lost. The difference between a lost person and a saved person is what they do with Christ. You believe or you choose not to believe. The Scripture very clearly teaches that a person makes a choice to believe or they make a choice to not believe. Both are choices. And either God will help you or Satan will help you. You choose to believe, God will help you. He'll help you believe. You choose not to believe, Satan will help you. He'll be a big friend to you and help you go to hell. That's what he wants to do. He's the God of this world. Well, then the, he says this last. The light of the glorious gospel of Christ is the image of God should shine unto them. All right, here's an action that's done by individuals. It's not done by God. God didn't say, well, this person gets to go to heaven, this person doesn't, this person gets to see light, this person doesn't. It's a, that's uh, what the Scripture refers to as a doctrine of damnable heresy. God hates it. A doctrine that would teach about Him, that He would pick people to go to heaven and pick people to go to hell. He doesn't do that. Individuals choose to believe or not to believe, and Satan will help them or God will help them. That's what the Scripture teaches. and teaches it very plainly here. It's a good place to look at it. And he says, last... The reason they've been blinded, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Let me ask you a question. When did light, when was light rejected to the person? When did they not receive when did they lose the opportunity for light? When they stopped believing. When they chose not to believe. Friend, you choose your eternal destiny. I've met people who say, Well, I'd like to be saved, but I can't. I'd be saved, but I can't. And there's all kinds of reasons people say they can't. Some are just honest. They say, I'm too wicked to be a Christian. And they don't understand being enabled by God. They don't understand the power of God's Spirit. They, how could they? they they're, not, they're not spiritually enlightened. So they think, well, I'm not good enough to be saved. Well, they're closer. They're closer than people that think they are good enough. Boy, there are folks. Man, um, they just believe, you know, hey, there's light. God either gives light or He doesn't give light. And God hasn't given me light. I mean, God, I've heard people say, God won't let me get saved. I've tried to get saved, God won't let me. Friend, I'll tell you something, that's a contradiction in the Scripture. Your blindness, your darkness, follows unbelief. And unbelief happens in your heart, not in God's. You have a choice. You have a choice to go to heaven and go to hell. Let's move on. He then goes on to say this. He said, this ministration, this ministry, this waiting on tables, this helping the needs of others. He said, is um, this, this ministry that we've received, um, 
is not one that we've preached our